Hey everyone, welcome to the Oak Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna do something that we haven't done since the channel first started. Today, we're gonna go over a sewing technique called English paper piecing, also referred to as EPP. And this is a hand sewing project. Stay with me. I know a lot of, I know it is a hand sewing project, but it yields some of the most beautiful designs. Okay, so today the pattern I'm gonna show you goes specifically with the snack bag pouch that we make. Um, pattern for this is completely free. There's a tutorial for it that's completely free. I'll have it all linked down below. You can use templates. We have those in the shop. I'm gonna show you how to use some different templates. I'm not gonna walk you through making the whole bag, but I am gonna walk you through making this top panel right here. So let's get a closer look. As you can see, we have three different shapes here. We have a hexagon in the center, we have two pentagons on the side, and then we have four small triangles. When we sew these all together, we get these perfect points, you can get perfect pattern placement, and you can create really cool looks. So what I'm gonna show you today is a pattern that goes specifically with the snack bag, but you could use it on anything. You could, you could use these pieces to create a whole different type of design, which I highly encourage you to do. So to show you how to do this today, I am going to be using this set of templates. These are from our shop, they are clear. You cannot see them, can you? Here we go. They're from our shop, Shop Oak Roots. It is called the Nom Nom EPP set. Nom Nom because it goes with the snack bag. I don't know, it was, it was hard to think of a name for it. <laughs> But it is the three different shapes. It is a hexagon, a pentagon, and a triangle. And these have a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're gonna go through all the details of how to use these, what the markings on them mean. We're gonna go through all of that, don't worry. But I'll show you that I will be using these today and I will also be using these paper cutouts uh, with English paper piecing. The technique is we cut out fabric, we wrap it around a piece of paper, preferably cardstock, and then we hand sew the pieces together, take the paper out, smooth it out, and now you have a piece of material. You can use it as a quilt block, you can use it as material for a bag. You have a lot of options, which is really fun. So I'm gonna walk you through how I use the templates, how I use the printouts. They're all on Shop Oak Roots. You do not have to have the templates in order to do this. You can just use the printout, and I will show you a quick technique on how to do that. I'll also share with you all of my favorite tools from needles, thread, clips, glues, everything like that. There's really not a whole lot you need for this. Uh, it's actually really fun if you make yourself a little bag like this, you can actually keep all the supplies in this little bag, and then whenever you're out and about, you can just pull it out and start working on it, which is one of the things I love most about English paper piecing is that it is a on-the-go project. So sitting in the car pickup line, sitting waiting for a doctor's appointment, you know, taking the subway back and forth, flying, any, anytime you're just kind of sitting for a while and you're like, man, I really wish I could be sewing right now, this is a great project because you you can be sewing and it's fun. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share it with you and I hope you'll stick around because I know not everybody here loves hand sewing, but just just give it a try. If you're interested in it, please give it a try. So if you're new to the Oak Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. I will show you. This is the design we're doing today. On the other side, I have a full triangle design which only uses the triangle template. The triangle template is available for individual purchase on the site. I'm not walking you through this one just yet. We're gonna do a separate tutorial going over this design because there are a few little techniques we kinda wanna mess around with and I wanna start with something simple. So this is like a simple, quick, I mean really quick to make this panel, but stay tuned because we will have another tutorial going over this design in the future. All right guys, let's get started. So to make this top block today, I'm going to be using these acrylic templates as well as some paper cutouts. All of this is available on Shop Oakley Roots. The templates are not required. You can just use the paper cutouts. When you're making this specific panel right here, you only need one of each template. You don't need multiple templates if you're using multiple pieces. One template is gonna do for each shape, but for the paper cutouts, you're gonna want two of the pentagons, which is this one right in the middle, one of the hexagons, and then four of the triangle cuts. So make sure when you do your paper, you get that many of them. One of the printouts available does have one sheet that has just enough to make two panels using these shapes. So besides the templates and the cutouts, these are some of my favorite tools to use. You can see there's not a whole lot here. First, I have a marking pen. This is gonna be especially great because I like to trace out the pattern pieces using the templates. If you want, you can just use a rotary cutter and you don't need to mark it at all. But I do like to use a marking pen, so some sort of an air erasing or water soluble pen. Then a glue stick, preferably a glue stick that's made for sewing with, because this means it's going to easily detach from the fabric. We do have to glue the paper to the fabric and then sew it together, and then we remove the paper. And the last thing you want is some glue that's way too sticky, way too tough, and you're ripping your fabric as you're getting the paper out. So a glue stick from Sewline is what I prefer. I always have a little backup 
glue refill as well. We will be using some hand sewing needles today. These are from John's James. I'll have a link down below. These are personally my favorite. I love the little carrying case. I love that there's lots of different sizes. It is important that you use a sharp needle. Uh, we, we're gonna pretty much be weaving the thread through the threads of the fabric. So it's a very precise way of sewing. It's not difficult, but it is very precise. So you want a sharp needle. You don't want, any, you don't want anything too dull. To go with the needle, I have a needle threader here. Personally, I don't use these, but I thought this one was really cute, so I'm gonna try it out today. This is a must-have, something to protect your little fingers. Sometimes we're gonna be pushing that needle through maybe a thicker piece of material, or maybe you're just doing it over and over again. You will eventually start wearing down. I always use my middle finger to push the needle through, so you can hurt your fingers. So I like to use these little sticky pads. I just take one, stick it on my middle finger, Honestly, I'll keep it on all day because if I'm like going back and forth between sewing this and doing other tasks around the house, I'll just keep it on and at the end of the day, just throw it away. Some small clover clips are really helpful as well as a small ruler. If you're not gonna be using the acrylic templates, you're just gonna be using the paper cutouts, a small ruler is going to be very useful. And then for the fabric, I suggest you use something that has a really fun design on it. Kind of the whole point of English paper piecing is that you can get super precise with your pattern placement. So if you have some designs, you're like, I want this to be the focal and I want her arms to go up and then connect with another thing that's like this. You can do that, which is really fun. Also, I would highly suggest you stick with quilt cotton, which is also called cotton woven. On the triangle side here, I actually tried a few different types of material. I have some canvas, I have some water resistant canvas, and I can tell you they are difficult. I would highly encourage you quilt cotton, cotton woven, something like that. Lightweight cotton material is going to be your friend here. So as you can see, I've already done a few of these. I've done the two pentagons, and as the glue dries, if I know I'm not gonna be sewing it right away, I'll oftentimes take clips and just clip them on the corners because that's where you have layers of fabric, but you only have to do that for a little bit. The glue will hold it in place just fine. So I'm gonna lay out my design real quick, how I'm gonna do this. You can see my triangles here have these pretty big dog ears. You are more than welcome to trim them down. I wouldn't trim them all the way down, but you can trim them down a little bit because we do have a pretty large seam allowance. You can just trim them down a bit. You wanna leave a little bit of overhang still. You don't wanna trim it all the way down but you can trim it down just a little bit if you'd like. I'm gonna show you how to make these in just a moment. I just wanna show you what I'm already starting with. So you can see, you can kind of lay it out beforehand so you know exactly what you have so far. There we go. And then I have my blank piece of paper here where I still have to pick the center design. So this is fun, it's like a puzzle. It's like an artistic, creative puzzle. You can really switch things around here. So I'm gonna show you how we wrap the hexagon. I'll also show you how to wrap a small triangle because that one is so small. Um, we'll go through that together. So first I'm gonna show you how to use the template. As you can see on the template, we have the outside of the template and then we have this dashed line. Now that dashed line matches up perfectly with our paper pieces. It fits right in the center like that. So that dashed line is gonna show you, this is what you're gonna see in the end. Anything outside of that dashed line is going to be wrapped around the paper. I do have a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is a little bit big. I know a lot of times people like a quarter inch seam allowance. I put a 3 8 inch seam allowance because if you're using a thicker material like canvas or something, you're gonna want that extra seam. So let me see if we can if we can see this. I'm gonna put this on my fabric and I'm gonna decide which, which design do I want to be in the center of my bag. I think I like her and I know I want some of these bats to be in there as well. So I'm gonna position this to make sure everything I want is in the dashed line area and then just holding it down, I'm gonna trace around the edges if you want, you could use a rotary cutter instead, especially if you have a smaller rotary cutter, you can just all the way around. But I do prefer to trace and then cut with scissors. And once I have that traced out, I can just grab my scissors and cut on that line. It doesn't have to be a perfect cut, but you do wanna try to cut right on top of the line. But if it's a little wavy, a little jagged, that's perfectly fine. Remember, this is all gonna be wrapped around the paper and it'll be on the back side. Okay, so there's one way using the template. Let me show you one other way real quick to use just the paper piece and a ruler. So if you're just using the paper piece and not the templates, you have you can still do this, but you just won't be able to see through it very well. So in this case, let's say I want her to be on there. I'm just gonna kind of put this down, peek up, make sure I've got her completely covered. There we go. And then I'm gonna grab a ruler and you can decide if you want a quarter inch seam allowance or a three eighths inch seam allowance, but Figure that out now. I'm gonna say a quarter inch for this one. 
So I'm just going to line up the quarter inch marking on my ruler with the edge of the paper and I'm just going to draw a line and then I'm just going to repeat that around all the edges. Now, if you have a curved template, uh, I don't have any curved templates at the moment for this, but if you do, this is a lot harder to do. You will definitely want the acrylic template for that. However, any template that's just straight edges and corners, you can do this for. You can see I'm just going around. The hardest thing is making sure this paper doesn't move. You don't want it to move around on you, but I'm just going around each edge, lining up my quarter inch mark with the edge of the paper, and then just drawing a line. There we go. And so now I can just go around and cut out this hexagon, except this one has a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's the nice thing about the paper patterns is that if you know you want to have a bigger or a smaller seam allowance, you decide when you're using it. You don't have to just stick to it at, like you do with the acrylic templates. And there you go. And you can use this piece of material the same way we're going to use the other piece of material. So now to prep this, this part's super easy. You're going to flip your cut out piece of fabric and you're going to look at the wrong side of it and you're going to grab your paper piece. Again, this should be on cardstock. Printer paper is just too loosey goosey. Cardstock, um, you, I, you could use like a stabilizer. I just feel like that could be kind of expensive. I know some people use Decoville light, Decoville heavy. Since I remove it, I don't leave it in there. If you're planning on leaving this in there in the end result, then yeah, Decoville light could be a really cool option here. Uh, but I'm not going to be leaving it in there. I'm gonna take it out. So cardstock paper is really the best option for me. So now I'm gonna grab my glue stick and I like to first put just a little bit of glue right in the center and then I'm going to lay this over my piece of fabric. And what I like to do is stick it on there, make sure it's centered for the most part and then I can flip it around and I'll just do like a real rough fold just to make sure, okay, everything I wanted is in there, it looks good, there we go. Now we're just gonna glue edge by edge. So on this first edge here, I'm just making a light line with my glue stick like that. I'm trying to stay within the seam allowance, so don't make it down here and you don't have to use a lot. And I like to actually extend it onto the fabric just a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna rotate this. And then I'm gonna take the fabric and I'm going to just wrap it around the edge of that paper and push down, just like that. And this glue is the best, it's so good. It, it's not too lightweight, it's not too strong. So when I go to the next edge, I'm actually gonna go over the fabric I folded a little bit along the paper, and then again, a little bit along the fabric over there. I'm gonna rotate this to make it easier for me. And then I'm gonna grab that raw edge and just fold it and wrap it around. And I'm not wrapping it really tight. I'm not like lifting it up and stretching the fabric and making sure it's as tight as possible. It doesn't have to be really tight. It's actually better if it's not too tight because if the fabric is just like become one with the paper, it's a little hard to sew it without going through the paper. So it doesn't need to be a very tight pull. I can't tell you exactly how to do it because it just takes practice. I'll show you. I just gently just pull it back. It's not too loose, not too tight. Just, just gently wrapping it back like I'm wrapping a present. So I'm gonna go around all the edges doing this. And what's really fun about this is you can actually just make a whole bunch of these without even a project in mind. Just make a whole bunch of these little templates that are wrapped with fabric and then hold on to them and sew them together however you want when you have a project come up. I'll show you, I actually have a bunch from years ago. I'll show you those. So there we go. Now we have this little, like, like little fabric card all ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna show you the triangle real quick just because the triangle is a bit smaller. Um, again, this is the best scrap busting project because you can have these teeny tiny pieces of scraps and you can, you can use a lot from it. So what do I wanna use here? Do I wanna use like her face? Yeah, I'll have her face. So I'm gonna just like that, I'm just gonna put it over the design I want and then I'm gonna go around with my marking pen and trace the template and then just grab some scissors and cut it out again on the line. All right, so I have my material and then I have my little triangle cut out and I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of my triangle cut out and then center it Make sure I've got everything I want. There we go, yep, got her little face in there, looks good. Okay, so for something small like this, you know the 3 8 inch seam allowance is pretty big. So you're gonna have a lot more flopping around. You can trim this down if you'd like, once you have this glued down in place, you could grab a small ruler and then just line it up with quarter inch and trim it down so it's a quarter inch seam allowance. That's always an option. I'm gonna leave it at 3 8 of an inch and I'm gonna glue along one straight edge just like I did with the hexagon all the way off on the fabric as well. Lightly 
fold over the side. And I'm going to keep going around like this. It doesn't matter which side you start with. Slightly fold it over. There we go. And then I'll do the last edge down here. And you can see you have a nice little triangle here. Again, if this overhang of fabric just seems excessive to you, go ahead and trim it down. Again, don't trim it right along the fold. You want a little bit of overhang still, but trim it down like that. And there you go. Now you have your pieces all prepped and all you have to do is sew them together. I do want to show you years and years ago when I first started doing English paper piecing, I got so excited about these that I just kind of went I decided to grab all my scraps and I was gonna make a bunch of pieces using all my scraps. And let me show you, I still have them in this bag because I haven't used them all. Look at these. So you can see I actually have a project that I'm still working on. But yeah, I just, I have all these little hexagons here that I keep with me. And then I have needles in here and I have everything I need. And just as you know, time arises, I'll grab a couple and put them together and sew them together until I have something that I, you know, might wanna use for something. So. This is why I love EPP so much, because especially whenever I was sitting in the parking lot waiting for school pickup and I had to be there an hour early because my kids wanted to make sure I was the first parent in line, uh, this is what I did. I just, I just worked on sewing these together. So now let's talk about how we're gonna sew all these pieces together. Now, this part does require a little bit of planning because you wanna utilize your thread as best as possible. So for example, I think I'm gonna do this in a few different sections. I think I'm gonna do this section, this section, and the center. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to sew this triangle to the top, and then that way I can continue sewing along this edge to sew this triangle to the bottom. And then I'll do the same thing over here, and then I can just sew this to the hexagon, and then this to the hexagon. So let's start with this side over here with the triangles and the pentagon. And first thing you want to do is look at the fabric and if you want it to be laid out, like if you're like, no, I want that up here, just think of how you want everything to be. I'm going to start with this first triangle up top. So I'm going to line it up. It should line up perfectly. You see how all the lines are nice and smooth. And then I'm going to flip these right sides together. Lift it up because it's easier if you lift it up. Grab a clip. Make sure your corners are matched up exactly. Grab a clip and just hold it together like that. I forgot to share the thread that I like to use. I like to use Aurifil thread. It is a cotton thread, it's not a polyester thread. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna be using this Aurifil thread and it is a 50 weight Aurifil thread. I like to use a nice neutral color, usually something that's like a light gray, a light teal, something like that is nice and neutral. Forgot to mention this as well, you also need a small pair of scissors. So if you want the measurement, I like to pull about 18 to 20 inches of thread off at a time, nothing too long. If it's too long, it's just going to tangle on you and it's gonna be a mess. I'm gonna grab one of my needles, and this is gonna be impossible for you guys to see, I apologize. But I'm going to grab a needle, and I'm gonna grab my needle threader. And all I have to do is stick the little tip, the little beak through the hole in the needle. And then I'll grab my thread, and this little beak here has like a hook on it. So you just kinda of have to hook your thread onto it, and then pull your needle back over the tip. There you go, and now you have your needle threaded. That's pretty easy, it's the first time I've ever used that thing, so it was pretty easy though. So now I like to take both ends of my thread and have them meet at the end like that. Try to straighten out the thread because sometimes it likes to twist on itself. And then I take the ends of the thread and I hold it against my needle just like this. I don't know how well you can see this. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the tip of the needle, so the pointy part of the needle, about three times, just like that. And then I, so you see I still have all the thread stuck under my finger. And then holding the tip with my left hand, I'm just gonna pull those those wrappings down the bottom of the needle and along the bottom of the thread until I get to the very bottom and you should have a nice little knot down there. You could also just tie it off if you want, but we just want a nice little knot at the bottom. There we go. So now I'm gonna grab one of my little handy dandy pieces here and I, I know I always push with my middle finger, so I know exactly where this needs to go. You might wanna do a few stitches on your own first and see what fingers you're comfortable using and then whichever one you feel pushing the end of your needle over and over, put your little thumb thing there. So now let's focus on the orientation of this and our game plan. I know I want to attach both of these triangles with one piece of thread, if I have enough. So I'm going to start here at the top and I'm going to work my way down this triangle and then I'm going to add the second triangle and keep working along. So I know I want to start at the top corner here, pull back the overhang of material, just like that, and then insert your needle. I like to go from the back coming towards me. So I'm going to insert my needle 
right back here on the corner, making sure it goes into the fabric on the back and into the fabric on the front. And it's not, it's right on the edge. I mean, right on the edge. So here you can see the needle goes through the back material and through the front material, and it's right on the edge of the material. So I'm trying to not pierce the cardstock paper. That's the goal. The goal is to just get the needle to go through the threads of the fabric and over the edge of the cardstock. So I'm still sewing it together, but I'm not sewing the cardstock in there. If you find that you do pierce the cardstock sometimes, that's perfectly fine. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt anything. So I'm gonna pull the thread all the way through. The knot's gonna stop on the back. And then I'm going to take my thread, wrap it over the top, and once again, I'm going to come from the back forward. So I'm gonna move to about an eighth of an inch to the left, and then once again, pulling it forward. Always go slow and check your thread. Sometimes you might just wanna kinda of rub your fingers along it, because that's going to help prevent knots. That's probably the most frustrating thing about doing this, and hand sewing anything, honestly, is when your thread starts to knot. Don't just try to jerk the knot through the fibers of the fabric. Take your time to prevent the knots. So you can see a lot of times I'll take my middle finger on the back here and I'll kind of hold the thread like that as I'm getting the needle ready to go through again. And that just again helps prevent any knotting because I don't have the thread just twirling around on the back over here. So I'm gonna do this all along the edge and the separation between your stitches might vary a lot. It does for me. Some people like a pretty good distance between their stitches. Some people like them really close together. Um, if you look too close to mine, you'll see I like both because it's not even at all. But the biggest goal here is just to make sure you're catching both the material on the back and the material on the front, the triangle and the pentagon. Because if you only catch one side, it doesn't do you any good. The point of this is to sew these two pieces together. Once you get about halfway through, you can remove the clip. And we're just gonna continue sewing until we get all the way to this corner right here, the end of our triangle. And once I get close to that, I do like to move any overhang out of the way. So let me give you a little visual of my stitches. You can see some are close, some are further apart, but this is about how they look. And again, they're right on the edge. There's my needle right on the edge. And what's nice is this is something that's very easy to do when you're sitting on the couch, watching TV, maybe just listening to a podcast, listening to music. Um, I know like I'll walk around the house doing this when I'm just kind of walking around making sure everything is picked up. I'll just walk around the house and hand sew as I go. Once you get the feel for it, it becomes something you don't really have to think about while you're doing, which is really nice. It's nice to just be able to create without having to think so much, you know what I mean? Okay, once I get to the very edge, I'm once again going to find the corners and I can clearly see the corner on the back piece of my material and the corner on the front. And I'm gonna put my needle right into those corners. Here's a little closer look. You can see the corners of my material. And I'm just sticking my needle right into the corner there. And pull the needle through. And now at corners, I want to double make sure it's okay. So what I'll do, and I should have done this at the beginning. I'm sorry, I forgot. I should have done this at the beginning of the stitch too. But what I'll do is I'll pull it through once and then I'll pull it through a second time. So I'm gonna push it right back into that corner, again, going from the back to the front. And I'm gonna pull it through, but I'm not gonna pull it all the way. I'm gonna wait until I have this nice loop here. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna insert it into that loop and then pull. And that's creating like a little slip knot. And you only need one. You don't need a whole bunch of them. Just one is good. So now you see I pull this back and I have this beautiful little shape now. Isn't that cute? So now I'm gonna grab another one of my triangles and I'm gonna decide how I want this. And when it comes to the overhang, these are called dog ears. When it comes to if you want those like this, like this, like that, it's up to you. Um, to make it easier, I know that this bottom edge here is gonna be sewn on with my machine to another rectangle for a snack bag. So I don't really have to mess with these dog ears if I put the dog ears towards the bottom. But if you have a image here and you need it to be a certain direction, just do it like that. You're, you're gonna be fine either way. So I know I want this to line up just like that. I'm gonna flip it right side together with that bottom edge. You can see I still have my needle and thread just kind of hang in there. I'm gonna move any of the little dog ear overhang to the side. 
and I want to match up the edge exactly. So corner to this corner and then corner to the corner I just sewed on. And I'm gonna use a clip to hold it in place. Now, remember, I am not an English paper piecing expert, <laughs> but this is something I like to do. When I start off on the center piece right here, I actually want to go through three different pieces. I wanna go through this other triangle I already sewed on, I wanna go through this pentagon, and I wanna go through the new triangle. Not all at once necessarily, but I do want to make sure this triangle and this triangle are connected in some way. So to just get started, I'm gonna go between the corner on the tip of the pentagon, so that pink piece of fabric, and then the corner on my new triangle, and I'm gonna pull it through once, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna go to the same spot, I'm gonna pull it through again, and I'm going to slip knot it, and that just locks it into place. And now, I'm also gonna go through the little overhang over here, the corner of my triangle I already sewed on, and I'm just gonna push that through about the same spot that I pushed the needle through previously, and pull it through. So now I know at least this triangle is somewhat attached to the triangle that I'm sewing on now. This just prevents any little holes. And now I'm gonna go along this edge of the new triangle and the edge of my pentagon, and I'm gonna sew this on just like I did this triangle here up top. And if you couldn't quite get this triangle and the new triangle to attach in any way, don't worry, you will have another opportunity when we sew this on to the hexagon. If at any point you run out of thread and you're like, oh no, I'm only halfway done, that's okay. All you have to do is once again, finish your stitch, do another stitch, do a slip knot, and then you can cut off your thread and start again, again with a slip knot. All right, once I get to the very, very corner at the end here, I'm once again gonna make sure my needle goes through the corners exactly in the corner spot, push it through once, and then I'll push it through twice in the exact same corner spot. And then pulling it out, you can see my thread's getting short, but I can still make a little loop, stick my needle through there, and lock it. So you can see my thread broke as I was pulling the needle out. Uh, it broke by the needle, which is another reason why it's good to have shorter pieces of thread rather than longer ones, because cotton thread is not very strong. If you're using a polyester thread, you don't have to worry about it so much, but cotton thread is not very strong, so the more it's just rubbing against this needle, the more likely it is to break. But we wanna cut down the thread. We don't need a very long overhang, just a little bit. If you want, you can use some sort of a magnetic dish here to hold your needle. You can get it off the table. And that way you don't have to worry about your needle rolling off the table, going on the ground or anything. So let's open this up and there we go. How cute does that look? Let me see if I can show you. You can see the stitches. Some of these stitches you can see pretty well and some of the stitches are pretty hidden. So the stitches that you can see well, it's because my needle went down further from the edge, closer into the paper. And then the stitches you can't see very well are because my needle was right there on the edge above the paper. So that's something to think about. And that just takes practice. As you can see, I'm not perfect at it. And a lot of this will be fixed once we take the paper out. But I did want to show you the difference in that. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat that exact same thing with the left side, starting from the top, adding one triangle, and then adding the second triangle. And then I'll meet you back over here to put it all together. Okay, so I just quickly did the left side. So I have the left side, the right side, and then I have the center here. I'm gonna do like that. Very cute. So now I'm gonna show you how to attach all these three pieces together. You can see we have kind of a wonky angle here where it's like, well, but that's not straight. It will be fine. So first side I'm gonna attach is the top pieces right here. So I'm gonna flip this so that it's right sides together with that triangle, focusing on this edge. So I'm not flipping it like this, okay? I'm flipping it like this. I'm matching up that edge of the hexagon with the edge of the triangle that it's gonna be attached to. So flip this around however it makes it easier and just make sure you have corner to corner, okay? Corner of your triangle to the corner of that side of the hexagon. I know it looks wild like this, it's supposed to. Make sure you have it all lined up and then clip together. Once again, thread your needle, get yourself a nice, you know, 20 inch long piece of thread. All right, and here we want to start at the top. So you see this is the top right here. We wanna start there and go down, okay? So however that's easiest for you. I'm actually gonna have it so that the hexagon is wrong sides to me. And I'm just gonna find the corner of that triangle and the corner of that hexagon right where they meet. Pull the needle through, pull it once, put it right back in that same spot or just right next to it. Pull it again, leaving a loop, sticking my needle through that loop 
creating a nice little lock right there. And I'm gonna go along this edge, just like I did with the triangles before, all the way until I get to the center inner corner here. All right, once I get to that very corner inside here, once again, I'm focused on getting that needle right in the corner and putting that needle through this corner right here might be a little difficult because there are quite a few layers. That's where this thimble on your finger is gonna come in really handy. And there's lots of different types of thimble. You don't have to use the sticky one. It's just the one I like. So I'm gonna get it all the way through and then I'm gonna repeat that. This time I'm gonna leave a little loop, stick my needle through the loop and pull. All right, so if I pull this back now, you can see it lines up just like that, isn't that cool? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this back down against this triangle. So that means you're going to bend this, which is not hard to do because there's a seam right there, see? So we're just gonna fold this so it's right sides together along the other triangle. We're not fighting anything, but even if we were, you could always bend your material, bend your pieces of paper to get the edge lined up that needs to be lined up. These should perfectly line up because everything's already, you know, the right size. And then I'm just gonna continue sewing along this new edge here. Once again, I'm going to do a little lock in the beginning. So I'm gonna push my needle through the material once all the way. Sometimes the thread likes to get caught up on things. So I try to make sure I keep everything straight. Just patience is key. So once all the way and then again, but this time locking it just like that. And now I'm gonna go along this edge, sewing it just like I did previously. And then once we get to the very corner, again, just end it with a nice lock stitch like that. And then trim off your thread. Let's open it up. Look how cute that is. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, just lining this up. Again, always make sure you get those little dog ears to the back. But just like I did on this right side, I'm just gonna start at the top and go down towards the bottom. Now I did wanna mention that it doesn't matter which side is on top, right? So whichever way it's easier for you. So on this one over here, it was easier for me at one point to have the hexagon wrong side up. Over here on this side, I think it's gonna be easier to have the triangle wrong side up. So just remember to just focus on going from one point to the next. I know I didn't wanna start in the middle and go off to the side and start in the middle again and go off to the side. I wanna do one line of stitching. So, and that, that just takes practice, but it, it, it does become very simple the more you do it. So I'll show you as I'm sewing this edge over here, sometimes the hardest part is figuring out how to hold it. Like if I hold it over here on the bottom, I don't have much control but if I hold it up here on the top, you can fold things out of the way and just, just make sure you have control over this. Again, patience is key, um, but once you get in a rhythm, it's very quick. Alrighty, so here we go. I have it all sewn together and I feel like if you're new to English paper piecing, uh, this is a really great, nice block to work on because if you're a bag maker, this is a great block because you can quickly whip up a snack bag with it. You have a couple of small shapes and then large shapes. So you're learning a lot of techniques here. You're learning how to sew the smaller shapes, how to create the bigger shapes, and then also how to sew angles like this that aren't perfectly flat. I feel like it's a really good introduction to English paper piecing. So now what we wanna do is we wanna remove the paper because I don't wanna leave the paper in there. If you're using Decoville Light, which now I am actually very interested in trying, uh, if you're using Decoville Light, then you can leave it. But even if you are using Decoville Light, I would suggest you pull the seams out. So you can see I'm just pulling this back. This is why I said it's important to use glue that's made for fabric, not like really strong glue, because we need to be able to pull this back because we need these seams here on the sides and the bottoms to attach it to the next part of the bag, right? We can't sew it like this. We need this raw edge here. So as you can see, I just gently pull the fabric back and then I pull out my paper and you can reuse these. I mean, it's not pretty, but you can definitely reuse that. So it's not single use. I could probably get another one or two uses out of that piece of paper before it starts to fall apart. Work on these corners here. Try to make sure you get it spread out as much as possible and just gently remove all your papers. If you find that you got the needle in some little bits, just gently tug it out. You can rip the paper a little bit, it's okay. All right, once the papers are out, you might have a mess like this. So we do want to iron this, but before we iron this, we just wanna go through each of these corners because what we want is a nice rectangle here. You can see we still have some glue kind of holding it together. If you have edges like this, see how like down here they separate from one another, just try to move them together. If you have any glued edges still, pull them out. So this part we want to go bit by bit. And to be honest, you might, if you have one of the small Cricut irons, you might actually wanna use that because we really wanna focus 
seam by seam as we press this. I'm gonna press it with the right side up and I'm just gonna carefully go one edge at a time. So now I'm gonna focus on this little triangle down here. I'm just trying to get everything lined up as neatly as possible. And the goal is you don't wanna have any really large gaps down here because we do still have to sew this, you know, together and we don't want any little holes in our seam. So just make sure you open up the seams, get them nice and flat. Okay, so now once you have it perfectly flat, it might still be a little messy, that's okay. Just go around the corners, see whatever seams you can kind of pull out again. So now that I have this done, I'm gonna grab one of the templates that I have for my snack bag top. I'm gonna lay it over and my block is just slightly bigger than it needs to be. So I'm gonna trim it down. Ignore these cut edges over here. I was trying something when I was putting these together. Don't, don't cut your edges. Just leave, leave the fabric like I showed you when we cut it out originally. So I'm gonna grab my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna trim off any excess. There we go, so lift that up. Pull out the center piece here. There we go, now our beautiful top is cut to size. And now usually I will add some woven interfacing to the back of this, um, or you can add fusible fleece, however you're gonna proceed with this. You can add your deck of the light, but usually woven interfacing is what I will add over the back of this just to hold all the seams down. But do you see how cute that is? It's such a perfect little block. And you, you again, you get exactly what you want where you want it. You don't have to worry if the images are gonna show up the way you want them to. You know beforehand how they're gonna show up. So I hope you love making these. All right, so what do you think? Are, are you a little interested? If you're opposed to hand sewing, are you just a little bit curious to give it a try? Like I said, this is a great, this is a great little pattern and a great little project to give it a try, to see if you like it. Cause if you don't like it, you, you didn't waste much material and you still have something really cute you can use and make a bag out of. But if you do like it, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> we have lots more coming. <laughs> but honestly, it's something I love to do. And it's also a great project for beginner sewers, whether you're young, older, just kind of getting into it. It's a really nice way to start understanding how two pieces of fabric come together and the importance of spreading out stitches or how deep a stitch goes or what type of thread to use or how fabric lines up with each other. I think it's there's a lot you can learn from such a quick and easy project. And then, I don't know, and then sky's the limit. There's so many things you can do. I can't wait to make this into a bag. I'm gonna make another panel like this one and I'm gonna make it into a little snack bag. I'm so excited. So thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you had fun. If you give this a try for the first time, let me know if you are an EPP master, let me know what I did wrong <laughs> because I am not a professional English paper piecer, but uh, I know how to make stuff out of it. So I figure if I can do it, you can do it. I'll show you what I know and then I'm sure you'll let me know uh, better tips, tricks, things like that. Just leave them down in the comment section. I am always eager to learn new ways to do something. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.